everybody, uh, welcome to uh, our open house at the Theatre of Arts in this very strange times. We were hoping to see people in person, but um, this is how it is in uh, 2020, it seems that we're going to be online and uh, a lot of our courses are, are going to be moving online for the start of the next semester at least, but um, we're okay with that. We're going to make it work. We've got a world-class faculty um, that we want to share with you right now. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the Theatre of Arts. Um, we're the oldest um, acting conservatory in the, in the uh, Los Angeles area. Uh, we've been going since 1927. We were started off by a gentleman called Ben Bard. Um, the reason he started the Theatre of Arts is actually when um, they were going from the silent movies to the talkies and he thought these people need to learn how to act and talk and walk at the same time and that's why it was it was set up. We're very lucky, we've got a very, um, we had Michael Chekhov was one of our um, early teachers at the Theatre of Arts, which many people have heard of because he was actually working under um, Konstantin Stanislavski, one of the preeminent teachers of the 19th and 20th century. He, uh, he's also related to um, Anton Chekhov, who you may know from, who wrote plays like The Seagull um, and then um, The Cherry Orchard. Um, he ran the Theatre of Arts for uh, quite quite a long time. and then, but. What I want to emphasize today is that as storied as we are, and as lucky as we are to have such great alumni, such as um, Clint Eastwood and Marilyn Monroe, is that we, um, we are actually fiercely modern. Um, we have a very modern outlook at um, Theatre of Arts. Please go on our website at any point, it's toa.edu, um, and you will find out more information about it. I'll tell you about some of the courses we have. We obviously, we have the traditional courses that we think that any theatre school should have. We have the acting classes, which include Shakespeare. We have voice. Um, we'll, we'll introduce you to one, some of our faculty later on. And we have a lot of on camera. Um, we have on camera because we are in the centre of Hollywood. Uh, we're literally off um, Hollywood and Highland. Um, where the Oscars are. Um, so hopefully some of our students will, will be there a bit later on um, getting Oscars. Um, we also are the only school in North America that offers motion capture. Um, this is um, an amazing thing that we're, we're offering right now because we have worked out from talking to people in the industry that this is the future. This is where people, actors are going to get um, work in the next few years. We also have stand-up comedy. Um, the reason we have stand-up comedy is we will, I'll introduce you to that uh, faculty member later on, is because it's about getting work. We are a school, a boutique theatre school, and our, our emphasis is getting people ready for the industry that is happening now. And it's about getting you employed in that industry. And that's why you can see that when you go through our course catalogue and you can see from what's rolling on the screen right now, the kind of courses that we offer we are an accredited drama school. We are with NAST, but um, we offer things that are sketch, commercials, and industry development. Um, I'm going to show you a quick sizzle reel in a few seconds, just to show you a little intro of, to um, the Theatre of Arts. And there's Reese, who is uh, our, my right hand, and is basically running the whole show. You're going to have to forgive some of the technical things that are going on today. I mean, Reese is doing an absolutely brilliant job. And here we go. <laughs> Okay, that's just to give you a little flavor of what, what kind of things we do at Theatre of Arts. You might have seen a few familiar faces there as well, like Ray Seahorn, who is currently on Better Call Soul. 
Um, she came in and she had a chat with the actors, um, as did Stephen Moyer, who you might know from True Blood, who played Bill the Vampire in that. There's also a few people that you might have seen in there, but you might go up with, are they familiar? Well, we have um, Alexis Woodall came in and she is the president of Ryan Murphy Television. They make more television in Los Angeles than anybody else. And of course, um, uh, our board member Blanca Lister came in. Um, she is um, currently the head of um, production at Henson Pictures and she's making a movie with Guillermo del Toro at the moment. So we, we're very lucky because of where we are in Hollywood that we can actually talk to these people and, and people are, always want to help students and they say yeah we'll come in and we'll have a chat with the students and we're building up those relationships and the students understand that this is a business that they are getting into and they can put a uh, they can put a face to the names when, when they uh, when they come in to see them and they, they give excellent advice um as i said earlier on um we're very proud about one of the courses that we have at the moment we're the only school in the north america that is doing it and that is motion capture um, I want to introduce you now to our motion capture teacher, who is Henry Layton. He also teaches combat here, combat one and two, uh, unarmed and armed combat. So you'll learn how to uh, take a punch from this guy. Um, and he's going to take you a little bit through what happens with motion capture. Uh, yeah. Hey, guys, I'm Henry Layton. Uh, I think before I start going here, I think, Reese, you've got a sizzle reel we can show as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Reese. That's awesome. Uh, and I think uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself and where I got started, I've been doing uh, motion capture internationally for about 19 years now. Started with a game called The Chronicles of Riddick, which also they used the motion capture for uh, the movie, the film, motion capture, or The Chronicles of Riddick. Um, I, was, uh, I was Riddick. I was actually Vin Diesel, if you can believe that. Uh, but that's the beautiful part of doing motion capture. You can be anything, anybody. I've played a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've played a 400 pound prostitute in heels walking down the street. Um, but in, those, in that time, we started with Universal and then we moved to a sister company in New York. Uh, now, it's now known as Rockstar Video Games. Also came out here to LA where I work with Sony a bunch and Disney as well. Uh, and so, yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about what motion capture is. Uh, there's two types. There's a telemetry motion capture and there's also optical motion capture. Now telemetry motion capture is what we use at Theater of Arts. What we do with optical motion captures, where you see in the studio where, where someone, an actor is in the studio and they're surrounded by a bunch of cameras. Uh, we also teach you how to do that. So once you leave the school, you're prepared for that kind of job as well. But what we use, and you'll see here in a little bit, uh, here's some of the stuff we did in the volume. There's my director hitting me, of course. Uh, but yeah, so with uh, telemetry, you don't need cameras. And that was, is what makes it really convenient for us. Uh, we can just put a, an actor in the suit and immediately you can see them as a Tyrannosaurus Rex or a robot or any other character we need. Uh, then if you have to do optical, we teach you how to do that because you're only put in a suit. You don't have any technology on your person. And then we break that up into two parts. It's called in-game or cutscenes. In-game, for those of you out there who actually play video games, um, you know if you're just walking down the street with your character, you're walking down holding a gun or something like that, uh, that's called in-game. And if you've played video games through one point or another, you've probably come up point, across the point where you've probably killed me a thousand times through all the, the games I've made. Um, and then we go to cutscenes. Now, cutscenes, that's where you get to do the acting scene. So if you're in a video game and you're playing a level and you beat that level, it'll cut to an acting scene. It's almost like a pre recorded scene. Uh, so that's what we get to teach the actors as well in our class. Um, you'll see here in this video where we're doing in game moves, walking in a straight line, doing the turns, all those things that are called strafing or or actually just walking in a cycle, stuff like that. Uh, let's see, just talk about hitting marks. This out, every time you do motion capture, you have to hit a mark, you have to be very specific 
but you have to do it in character. And so I teach the students how to walk with weights and walking distance and speed and tempo, that kind of deal. And it has to be within their characters. Um, I, and when I first started, uh, it was motion capture was fairly new. And also you can see here how the technology works in post. So that's the student actor in the suit. That's the raw data you're seeing there. And that's how we transform that into an animated character. And I think in a little bit, you'll see a guy named Big Dave. Uh, Big Dave is also an actor and a stunt person. He actually is in Better Call Saul as well. He's known as Man Mountain. And you can see him here was called doing what's called cleaning up the data. There he is, big guy. Um, so once we get the, the data recorded or motions captured inside of our volume, and the volume's the set in which we work in, uh, that's transformed into the characters you see. And Reese, you can go ahead and chunk the volume here so they can see this. This is one of our final products from inside our studios. And if you'll notice, you'll see that the actor and the camera person is working with in synchronized yeah. movements here. So that you go from the, the studio room in the top left corner to the actual animated room that you're seeing in your, your big screen here. And that's what makes it so great because once you take the class and once you graduate, yeah, you you'll have this footage to take with you. So anytime you go out to an audition, when you're at that audition, there's several people saying they want to do motion capture, but it's so new, uh, it's, it's hard to separate yourself from the other actors trying to compete for that job. You show them that you have this footage, they, the, the uh, casting agent or the producer or the director, they can say, oh, this we don't have to teach this actor how to do motion capture. He or she already knows how to do it. Uh, and one thing I want to point out, uh, the suits that we're using, the technology we're using, the state of the art. And to give you an example, if you've ever seen the movie Avatar, uh, James Cameron directed that movie. And he's directing Avatar 2, 3, and 4 as we speak, uh, except for now he's been shut down from in New Zealand because of the, the virus that's around. But they're doing 80% of that movie underwater. And he spent over 10 years trying to figure out a way to do the motion capture underwater because normally you have to have it surrounded by cameras. Those cameras don't work underwater with motion capture. So they found a way to do uh, their movie underwater for Avatar with, a with technology that's called telemetry motion capture using the exact same suits, the exact same software, and the exact same technology that we're using at Theater of Arts. So when you go out to that audition, they're gonna say, oh, you do telemetry motion capture. We don't have to teach you how to do it. You already know what's going on. And that's, that's our main goal here for teaching this class at Theater of Arts. Um, yeah, so I guess there's one way to talk about the, also there's performance capture. Now performance capture is when you also record your voice at the same time that you're doing all the motion capture. Now I had a, my, my background is in acting and in movement and stunts. So when I went into this, my first job, and that's the whole point, you don't wanna get just one job. You wanna have several jobs, back to back to back. If you can do the acting, the physicality and the voice, you're, on, you're a golden ticket for any producer in any studio. You, you are a huge commodity to them. And so that's why it's not just the motion capture, it's not just the physicality, it's actually the voice teaching into that. And uh, I think we have someone else, another instructor coming up to talk to you about our voiceover and how that works as well. Uh, thank you for the videos, Reese. Yes. Thanks, Henry. Uh, it's, I think it's fascinating where we're going in the modern world with acting. Um, and I, I'm going to take us um, to um, something more traditional in a few moments. But first of all, I just wanted to just remind everybody, if you go on our website, you will see that we are a fully accredited acting school by NAS. Um, and you can see all the information that you need will be on our website. Once again, it's toa.edu. You can request information and you can check us out there as well. Um, I just now want to end we were talking about, I'm glad that Henry finished off talking about voice. Um, we take it very seriously as, as actors that, that, that you need to work on your voice. Um, uh, that's why Ben Bard set up the school in the first place in 1927. What he didn't realize is that we were going to get somebody as illustrious as Nicolette Shapley to work with us and that she is our head of voice here. Uh, Nicolette, I should just tell you a little bit about it. Not only is she a wonderful voice teacher, she, everybody that on our faculty works within the industry. Uh, Nicolette was uh, actually the, the vocal coach on a film called Parent Trap with a young actress called Lindsay Lohan a few years ago. And she's done many things besides that. But anyway, I am going to pass you. And she's got a show on Broadway as well. She's, she's a bit shy about that, but I thought I'd just throw that one in there. But um, let me introduce you to Nicolette. Hi everybody, my name is Nicolette Chaffee and I'm the Chair of Voice at Theatre of Arts and I have worked here for the last 18 years. Now, if 
you were coming into your first voice class, you'd walk into a room with me sitting behind the desk with a large sharp knife and a bag of corks. Two reasons. One, because we would cut the cork to size for you personally, and I would remind you at that time to think of the cork as your new best friend. And second, to start you on the road to realizing that you are going to have to change your way of thinking. This granny sitting behind the desk with a large sharp knife is not the normal image. And the fact that you think you already know how to speak makes you unsure as to why you need a voice class. And I'm here to explain why. We learn to speak at our parents' knee. We pick up their habits, their quirks, the unique way of speaking. But not all characters sound like you. Different writers have different voices. Uh, Shakespeare and Mamet. Yeats and D.H. Lawrence, Dylan Thomas and Thomas Hardy. The list is endless, but the point is, you need to be able to adapt your speech pattern to the writer's voice. The actor is the link between the writer and the audience. Now let's face it, voice, is probably the least favorite of an acting school. As you saw from Henry and motion capture, great fun. And you will see from Alex Feldman, introduction to camera technique, the real thing. And then there's voice. But let's look at it another way. No matter how creative and unique you want your performance to be, you have to start with the foundation. And that means concrete and rebar. Otherwise, the whole structure collapses. So the first term, we start to identify your particular needs and problems. We create a common language uh, that you and I speak so that we can strengthen our communication. And we, you, learn to speak anew opening yourself to new possibilities, not a fake voice, not a put on voice, but a sound free and clear, accent less and open to creativity. Second term, we start with much harder text, constantly stretching you. And then the fun part, you choose a piece that you would like to work on. I encourage the students to head to film and television uh, for their choices, for two reasons. I want it to be easy for film and television to cast you. Let's be typecast until you are such a star and making so much money that you can demand that your agent finds you new and challenging, interesting roles to play. And two, you have a role in your back pocket that you can do on the spot. True story, Patricia Heaton, everybody loves Raymond, was living in my basement and doing some photocopying for the theater I ran. So obviously out of work. When someone came up to her and said, he thought she'd be right for a TV series they were casting. And the rest is history. Now, I would like to introduce you to, to some second term students and have them perform the pieces that they chose. Tevin? Hello, my name is Tevin Harris and I will be betraying Coach Boone from Remember the Titans. Anybody know what this place is? This is Gettysburg. This is where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg. 50,000 men died right here. Fighting the same fight that we're still fighting amongst ourselves today. This green field was painted red, bubbling with the blood of young boys, smoking hot lead pouring right through their bodies. Listen to their souls, man. I killed my brother with malice in my heart. 
Hatred destroyed my family. Listen and take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hallowed ground, we too will be destroyed just like they were. Now, I don't care if you don't like each other, but you will respect each other. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll learn to play this game like men. Thank you. Thank you, Tevin. And now I'd like to go to Abel. Thank you. Hello, my name is Abel Rosas, and I am going to do a monologue from Goodwill Hunting by Chucky. Look, you're my best friend, so don't take this the wrong way. But in 20 years, if you're still living next door to me, coming over to watch the stupid Patriots game and still working construction, I'll kill you. And that's not a threat. That's a fact. I'll kill you. Listen, you got something that none of us have. Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and I'll be 50 and I'll still be doing this. And that's all right, because I'm going to make a run at it. But you, you're sitting on a winning lottery ticket and you're too much of a fool to cash it in. And that's stupid because I'll do anything to have what you got. And so would any of these guys. It would be an insult to us if you're still here in 20 years. Every day I come by to pick you up and we go out for drinks or whatever and have a few laughs. But you know what the best part of my day is? The 10 seconds before I knock on the door. Because I'd let myself think I might get there and you would be gone. I'd knock on the door and you wouldn't be there. You just left. Thank you. Oh, thank Well. Thank you, Abel. And last from the second termers at this moment is Nick. Thanks. Hi, I'm uh, Nick Harris and I'll be performing Peter Clavin from I Love You Man. Yeah. Just. Hey. Sydney, how you doing? It's uh, Peter Clavin. I uh, met you last week at an open house. Get some guts, would you? All right, you know what to do. Hey, Peter, it's Sydney Clavin. Oh, that's not right. Hey, Sydney, it's uh, Peter Clavin. I uh, met you last week at an open house and uh, I had a showing. Uh, anyway, I was wondering if you ever wanted to get together and talk about real estate and whatnot, or whatnot, whatnot. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, that's right. The open house and, uh, we, uh, met... Anyway, no rush. You just uh, call me back whenever you get a mo. Get a moment and we will talk when I talk to you. Okay, hope you're having a great day. All right, bye now. God! Thank you. Thank you, Nick, appreciate it. Okay. So that's some of the uh, second term students. Uh, third term, I delivered you into the capable hands of one of, one of our other voice teachers, uh, Roshni. She's a wonderful teacher. And to me, the great thing is she and I teach exactly the same lessons in a completely different way. I think of this as a unique opportunity for students to learn the very important lesson of working with different directors in exactly the same discipline. She continues with developing your voice and applies it to interesting and more difficult text. Okay, term four, 
back to me and on to accents. We uh, work on three accents, RP, uh, posh English, Cockney, which is lots of fun, and generic Southern. And then any accent you've always wanted to do with the proviso that you could be cast with that accent. Now, I would like a fourth term student to come and give an example. I'd have liked to have given you more examples, but the other students have scattered to the four winds. So, Alex. Everyone, my name is uh, Alex Crone, and uh, my piece is from one of my favorite Terry Gilliam movies, Time Bandits, and I will be portraying the devil. It's a good question. Why have I let the Supreme Being keep me here in the fortress of ultimate darkness? I, oh, shut up, I'm speaking rhetorically. I let him keep me here in order to lull him into a false sense of security. When I have the map, I will be free and the world will be different because I have an understanding of video cassette recorders and car telephones. And when I have an understanding of them, I shall have an understanding of computers. And when I have an understanding of computers, I shall be the supreme being. God isn't interested in technology. He knows nothing of the potential of the microchip or the silicon revolution. Look how he spends his time. 43 species of parrots. Nipples for men. Slugs. They created slugs. They can't hear. They can't speak. They can't operate machinery. I mean, are we not in the hands of a lunatic? If I were creating a world, I wouldn't have messed around with butterflies and daffodils. I would have started with lasers. Eight o'clock, day one. Thank you. Great, thank you, Alex, appreciate it. Um, and now to conclude uh, with a quick story, which actually David alluded to, but I hopefully it puts your mind at rest about working voice online, which by the way, I love uh, as it is individualized and I can see precisely what you're doing with your mouth. Okay, so I was working with a private student online working on el eliminating an Australian French, French accent, which was a mess, but anyway, and giving her an American one. And we both agreed that we enjoyed working together and wanted to continue. So we set about writing a one woman show for her. She performed it in her city at various theaters and was seen and asked to take it to the uh, solo theater festival in New York at an off-Broadway theater directed by Austin Pendleton. Uh, look him up. Obviously, I flew to New York and after her first performance, we set eyes on each other in the flesh for the very first time. So everything is possible working online. And I hope that this gives you just a small taste, a little taste of what we do at Theatre of Arts in terms of voice. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. Really appreciate that. And I love that story at the end because we've been doing very well. We were all, the whole world has been forced online, of course. Um, and that's what we've been having to do the last few weeks. And we'll probably have to do, well, I will certainly have to do it at the start of the next semester. Um, I want to um, run through a couple of other things that we uh, that are also available for people at, at, at TOA. Um, we are very welcoming to um, people who are on the GI Bill. Um, we have had a lot of success in the last few years, and we have some current students um, who, who are on the GI Bill. So if you were in the military, um, we do um, accept that. Please just go again, go to our website, toa.edu. It says up there everything that you've got to do fill it in it's very simple and we will have people who can help you through that process and I know that we have um, somebody has already signed up in the last 48 hours um, who's just left the military and is now going to be joining us at TOA um, in May which is our next enrollment we will be having classes on May, um, starting May the 5th 
Um, we decided that we are just going to push forward anyway because we feel like we can do this online and then eventually we will all meet up together in person, like Nicolette says. Um, as we're based in Hollywood, um, we're obviously, we're very connected to the film and television industry and that is where most of the work is going to come from for people who live in Los Angeles. Um, with that being said, we do a lot of on-camera work and we're very lucky that we have um, some great on-camera teachers. Our head of on-camera, you uh, have probably seen his face a lot on the, on, the, on the screen, both big and little. It's Alex Feldman, who is our head of on-camera on at Theatre of Arts and I'd like to introduce you to him right now. Hi everybody, my name is Alex Feldman. I am the chair of the on-camera classes at Theatre of Arts. I believe Reese has a little video to introduce me. Hi, my name is Alex Feldman, and I'm one of the on-camera instructors at Theatre of Arts. Is this ends now. I'm sorry I let you down. Good afternoon. My name is Lewis Allen, and I've been suffering from sleep paralysis for three years. <laughs> You let anything slip through the cops. Your parents are gonna pay. No, 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 no! Como dices, estoy muy contento de estar aquí. With the American accent, I'm very happy to be here. With the Russian accent, I'm very happy to be here. I will come. If I understand baseball, maybe I will understand America better. In on-camera classes, we equip the actors with the knowledge of how to work on the, on the technical elements of uh, on-camera performance, as well as the organic behavior to be captured by the camera. We address how the camera is used on sets and in audition environments, and we try to provide some knowledge for the actors about how to be a good collaborator with the other departments on sets, the responsibility that the actor might have to the on-camera department, uh, to the electrical department, to the wardrobe department, and how to uh, make sure that the performance is collaborative and not just for the actor's benefit. All right, thank you for that, Reese. appreciate that. Uh, so teaching at Theater of Arts with all the different on-camera classes that we have here, uh, comes on the backbone of a great tradition at Theatre of Arts, which is a tradition built in theater. And uh, the definition of acting by Konstantin Stanislavski is living truthfully under given circumstances. And all of the different disciplines you might learn at Theatre of Arts are all designed for the actor's ability to portray truth. And nothing captures truth greater than the camera. Um, the discipline that uh, Nicolette was just talking about, which is voice, is so paramount and so important uh, in my experience and certainly in experience of my peers to be able to portray the vocal truth that is different from the vocal truth that you may have uh, led in your own life. And certainly the same is true for what Henry was talking about mm -hmm. with the physical performance as well. But there is another ability uh, to capture truth that the camera has, which has not been discussed so far, which is the personal internal truth of a character as portrayed by an actor. Uh, I have a scene here from a film called Gladiator where uh, Maximus played by Russell Crowe is going through a very physical emotional experience when he has just finished a, a massive battle and it begins with a sequence where he really has to rely, um, rely on the ability to communicate physically and vocally. But then at some point in a scene, new information is brought to light by the audience who just witnessed him clapping. And Russell Crowe begins to portray the character through a new experience he's having internally. And the camera is able to capture that as well. Uh, I just wanted to show that clip so we can identify that switch from going from a physical to a more mental uh, uh, element. Let's watch that and we'll come back to discussing that. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?
Thank you, Reese. Um, that's a scene that's pretty iconic, and I think most viewers are familiar with it to some degree. And part of uh, the reason why that scene is so iconic is because it really captures a very important moment in the character's journey. And uh, as we watch that scene, we see Russell Crowe uh, experience a full arc of what the character is going through. And it appears to the naked eye that it's played out all the way uh, through continuously. But in, in reality, that scene is made up of a variety of different, uh, different shots and different cuts and different angles, all composed together to make the audience have an emotional experience that con that's connected to what Maximus is going through. And so at Theater of Arts, uh, certainly in the earlier portion of the on-camera classes, we expose all actors to what those different shots are, what the technical elements of working with the camera are. We teach the actor how the cinematographer contributes to the process, to the storytelling process. We teach the actor what the director's responsibility is. And if you are an actor who can contribute to that, then you are a hireable actor. I have had the privilege of be, being a working actor in film and television for the last couple of decades. And in those few decades, I've noticed uh, a huge change in, um, in the way that the actor collaborates with the other departments. I've also noticed that there's more opportunity for the actor in film, television, and new media than ever before. There's so many outlets and such a, in such a fast paced environment of the entertainment industry that if you are an actor who knows how to contribute, an actor who knows how to collaborate, you are an actor that is needed. So uh, in an effort to educate an actor as to how the on-camera department thinks and how the editor thinks, we definitely go through understanding what every shot that the camera captures is called and what the actor's responsibility is in their performance, how to slightly change their physical performance, their vocal and mental performance to continue to behave truthfully, but under the necessities of every particular shot. So after you've been through some shots, you'll be able to look at the scene that we just looked at and you'll be able to identify every single shot, which uh, I'll demonstrate a little bit for you right now. And we'll watch that scene again, I'm mute as I speak, and we'll come back to discussing the rest of the class. So as the scene starts, here we are in a master shot. There's a very difficult physical thing there. It cuts to an insert, and now we're in a medium single, back to a master. Now that's a close-up single, medium single. Back to a master, it's a different master, it's a reverse master. There's a group shot, a second group shot, another single medium where we can really get in tight. That's a master we haven't even seen yet before. That's another single medium. That's another master and a tighter single shot. So you can see that in the, just that small, small short scene, not only is Russell Crowe as an actor contributing, contributing a lot in his performance, but the on-camera department and in post-production, the editor are using so many different shots and moments to create a story. And as an actor, I find it to be my privilege to be able to provide the editor with moments of truth that the editor can put together. And so our classes really focus on uh, preparing the actor to be a collaborative actor who can contribute rather than just be an actor who is acting alone. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that um, our on-camera classes expose actors to how the camera is used in auditions. And there's something I've noticed recently, as David mentioned, uh, we are all sort of working from home right now uh, on, online. And I can't help but realize that actors have been working this way for a long time. A lot of our auditions are online uh, through self-tapes. And the number one feedback I get from students in on-camera acting classes is, I wish I could be on camera more. I wish I could see my own work on camera more because what the naked eye sees versus what the camera sees is quite different. Well, recently having to work with actors in this capacity, I realized that this is fantastic to get the actor used to what they look like on camera and what the camera captures, what is their personal truth, whether we're in a tighter shot or a wider shot. So strangely enough, this has been a really great opportunity to focus on on-camera acting. And as our new term begins online, I think this is gonna be a very wonderful time to, to address the fact that this is the new normal and this has always been a tool that is useful for actors. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all on camera. Thank you, David, and thank you, Reese.
Thank you, Alex. Really appreciate that. Um, and I also just want to um, say before we move on to our next member of faculty that we do, um, we, we do, um, we're very happy to um, host international students here at um, Theatre of Arts. We have the I-20, which is the F1 visa. Um, for those that don't know what that is, it means that you, we are a two year conservatory. We have six semesters. You heard us talking about second termers and fourth termers. Um, that means that you will get that visa for the two years that you are here. And for the third year, there is the OTP, which is an opportunity for you to work if you're an international student within the industry. So essentially it's a three year visa that we offer here at Theatre of Arts for all international students. And, and to be fair, we've also kept the prices um, for tuition is exactly the same as if you're international as if you were domestic American, um, because we just wanna make sure that um, everybody's felt it, they are dealt with um, fairly. So now let's uh, move on to our last um, of the, the faculty that I wanna introduce you to is the uh, head of comedy. Yeah, it's me. Um, basically, I am a stand-up comedian and I have been a stand-up comedian for many years. And you, many of you might be thinking, why are you doing comedy at an acting school? Well, the short answer to that is that um, it's about employment. If you look up a lot of the uh, top actors in the world, you will realize that they have done stand-up. And a lot of the reason is, is that if you want to be employed, we make sure that all our students on the day that they get their uh, degree that evening, they go to the comedy store and they get their first job and they get paid for doing it. They get paid for doing stand-up. Um, I've got a little reel which uh, Reese is gonna play for us on um, stand-up comedy. Um, the reason that I first uh, put this on the curriculum here at, at the Theatre of Arts is because I was at the comedy store as a comedian and uh, I realized that there was uh, the place was full of agents and casting directors and producers looking for new talent and the problem was is a lot of and they put a lot of their actors out there who just didn't know how to tell jokes and i realized that comedy is something that you can teach you're looking at students here all these students have had to do comedy um that girl essence has done incredibly well and there's the nurse those people have been doing shows all over town and it does lead to getting more and more acting work because people are trawling the comedy clubs looking for acting work. Uh, there's Keith who is actually, and one who are both doing incredibly well at the comedy store all the time. They're all getting gigs. And that, lead, and, and the one who has just got a job on Nickelodeon. Um, I had a, a student who, a lot of students tell me at the start saying, but I'm not funny, how am I gonna do this? Comedy can be learned. It is basically, it is down to structure. I've always argued that if you have a team of writers and a team of actors, on the first night, the actors are gonna do fine because they know how to perform through it. But the writers a few months later are gonna get better. And why is that? Because they are just gonna get up on stage and they are just gonna perform and learn and learn that craft. So the hardest thing to do for actors is you've gotta realize that we've gotta write jokes. But that's something we will do over the 12 weeks. We will break it down. We will break down the structures of joke writing. And so that by the time you get up to the comedy store, you will have a solid set. Hopefully Reese has got um, Martha here for me because Martha was somebody who told me that she could never do comedy. And she said at the start of the course, can I just do anything but? She turned out to be quite successful. She's fresh, it is Martha Najwa. I moved here from Uganda about six years ago. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and a lot of people ask me, so what is it like to live in a third world country? <laughs> Pasadena is not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but Palmdale on the other hand. <laughs> so you know when you get provoked into a conversation? I think what we like, like about your... Martha is that um, this was somebody who had never tried comedy. She, uh, she, as she says, opening a line from Uganda, that's the first time that she ever went on stage and it's in front of a uh, uh, hundred people in our, well, we have a 99 seat theater. So we, uh, let's call it 99 people were there that night. She, she got a big response and she got work on the back of it. Um, and she's been doing comedy ever since. 
Um, we also have a monthly comedy show, which we have in our the Arena Theatre, which is connected to the Theatre of Arts. That's our theatre. Um, that's been hugely successful. It's been well supported. Um, what I've been doing is I've been actually engaging headliners to come because headliners are loving coming to our theatre, putting on a show where we have students and also because we were in Hollywood, a lot of industry come. We had a headliner called Samba Shoot, who's a comedian that I have known for many, many years. Um, he did a show at the arena. There's a casting director and then suddenly it was there and suddenly he is now the star of an NBC show called Sunnyside. Um, uh, which goes out all around the world. And he is always sending messages to us at the Theatre of Arts going, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, and let's show you just a tiny little bit of the set that he did at the arena. It was an hour long set that he did. And it, it was after that night, his life changed. That's right guys, uh, I'm an immigrant. As you can tell, I am Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't look Dutch. <laughs> I know what I do look like though, because on the streets, freaking Indians always look up to me going, Hey brother, pase mi carne, I turn ahead, when you get a carne, get a very heavy cigar. I go, whoa, uh, I get it, but uh, I'm not, I'm not Indian. They really think I'm Indian. Hey, 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 look at my dot when I'm talking to you. You are Indian. I'm, I'm not, I'm not Indian. You're very tall for an Indian, yeah. You look like an avatar. <laughs> Uh, there's Samba Shoot, who is doing incredibly well right now. I mean, like the rest of us, he's, he's stuck at home right now. But uh, once they start filming again, um, things will be good and he will be out uh, with that show. Um, which brings me to another thing. At the moment, um, a lot of you know that the industry has kind of come to a bit of a standstill, certainly for production. It's great for development and it's great for uh, post-production, but production right now has stopped around the world. So what that leads me to believe is that it's a great time to train as an actor. Why? Because it means that there's nothing being made right now, but in 2021, 2022, they are going to be making a lot more television and film. And I want people to be ready and that's what we're trying to do here at the Theatre of Arts. With that being said, I want to bring back the rest of the faculty and um, the students that um, you saw earlier on, and I've added some more students into this uh, chat as well. And I think it's now um, your opportunity out there to ask us any questions you want um, about the Theatre of Arts and what it's like to be a student here. And Reese, uh, you can appear as well. Um, you, you, you've heard him <laughs> putting all everything together and you can see him and he, he will be um, filtering the questions in that he's getting from Facebook Live as we speak. All right. So I have a general question. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, hey, I was wondering uh, what kind of class do you provide for people that are looking for singers? For singers. We are building a musical theater course. Um, we were hoping to launch that in September. We're waiting on the accreditation, but the world unfortunately stopped a little bit. So I should be talking to them next week. Um, so we will be offering a musical theater course. Uh, we were hoping to launch that in, in September, but I can't confirm that now. That might get pushed because of what we're going through right now. Um, what I have been telling people is if anybody wants to come to this theater school and they decide that they want to transfer over to musical theater, we will allow that. Um, what the difference between the musical theater course and the, the uh, straight acting course for want of a better word is that we will probably be rather than doing you will be doing the voice classes and you'll be doing the movement classes and you'll be doing a lot of the acting classes you won't be doing as much on camera uh so it, you'll be substituting the musical um side of that with on uh, with, we'll take over from the on camera so hopefully that answers the question on that one awesome um henry this is for you um hey what are some things that i can do at home to work on the motion capture? Uh, there's a couple of things and it's, it's tough uh, to do it by yourself, but there is one thing we can do. And I talked earlier about the difference between in game and cutscenes. Uh, Reese, I think you have a video maybe. Uh, if you go back to the, the, the London video, if you will, go to the, I think it's the minute 50 mark. Yeah. Once I could show them where we're doing turns. So this is something, if you're an actor at home or want to be an actor at home that get into motion capture, this is something you can start practicing. And it's a, uh, 
I, one of the first things I teach in the motion capture class, and most of the students in the beginning, uh, it, it's challenging for them. Uh, I'll let them play this video real quick, and then I'll explain what's going on. Cool. Let's see what so right now you can see everybody's just turning. Now, if you look close in that, you'll see tape on the floor. What she's doing right there, she's doing a sidewalk uh, on that tape, but you can't look down. So what you can do in your bedroom or in your kitchen or living room, wherever your space you might have, come to a, a, what we call an idol. An idol is your stance. So for example, when you're playing a video game, if you're playing that video game and you get up to go get a drink from the fridge and you put the remote controller down in that, from that video game, uh, the character you're playing with doesn't just freeze and stand still. That character starts breathing or sort of twitches and stretches a little bit, that kind of a thing, while it's waiting for you to come back and continue the game. So with that, we have to do every single motion. We have to capture all of that. So get into a stance, maybe a fight stance, if you will, or if you want to play a creature or a zombie, get into your zombie stance with your left foot forward. And then, and Reese, can you go back to the video where they turn that, one, that 150 mark, I believe? Yes, sir. Once you get into that stance, tape your feet. Tape a rectangular block around your feet. Then turn to the right. In game. And this then turn back and see if you hit that mark without looking down. So you'll turn left, wow. you'll turn right, and you'll turn 180, which means turn backwards. And only do it in two steps. Don't shuffle your feet. Because if you shuffle your feet, an animator would have to go back and clean up that data. We don't want the animators to have to take that much time to do that because time is money. So right here, you see that wide stance? They just take two steps right there. Then try doing walks in your character. So if you're a zombie, for example, start at one end of your hallway, put the tape on the floor, or if you've got a carpet, put anything down that can mark it, uh, a rope even, and make sure that you walk on that line, or not on the line, in a straight line without weaving to the left and without weaving to the right, but don't look down. Because if you're playing a video game and you're looking down, that data is not useful for the player that's playing that video game. They need to, if they're holding a gun especially, they need to have that gun and eyesight in the same line. So if they turn, it turns. You can't look down when you're doing that. So that's something they can practice. All right. Thank you, Henry. Yes, yeah, awesome. of course. Thank you. Hey, uh, this is probably just a general question for you, David. Um, mm -hmm. They want to know, uh, and even Keith and Juan can, uh, can chime in on this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, from a Kendrick Benos and a Zakora Triple. They kind of have the same question. Uh, it's what are the rooms like on campus and what is housing like? Housing. Um, hopefully I've got one of it. If, if you're under 24, um, there is housing available um, at Campus Hollywood. I should explain that we're actually part of a much larger campus. There's the Music Institute. Um, there's also EI and IB, um, which is a which is a makeup school, which is uh, everything's in a little bit of transition right now. Um, and there, I, I, I'm not quite sure what the prices are. I think Keith and Ron would know better than that. I do persuade students. I do say that when you've been here for a while, just get a big house in Los Angeles and just like move in together. Um, but there is housing available um, if you're under the age of 24 right now. Does that answer the question, Reese? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, yeah, that was definitely what they were asking. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hope you're looking to, looking to come join our humble school. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see if we got any more. Um, so, Nicolette, um, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. They want to know, you mentioned quarks um, earlier in, in your presentation. What exactly do you mean by the quarks? <laughs> um, can you, you can hear me, I trust. Yes. Um, Okay, so you take a cork uh, and you cut it to two fingers, your two fingers width. So everybody's two fingers obviously are narrower or wider and you use them, the cork, to then put it into your mouth and you can keep talking with the cork in your mouth. Um, it's hard when you use two fingers because, of course, your tongue keeps hitting up against it. Um, but with a flat surface of the cork, which you cut after you've got the two fingers width, you cut it down the middle so you have a flat surface. 
and you can do most of your vocal exercises with the cork and it reminds you to keep the mouth open because there's no point in trying to talk to anybody like that with your mouth completely closed. So the idea is to get you to be able to open your mouth. Um, it, uh, I trained at the Royal Academy in London and we used to have uh, they weren't corks, they were bone, and they slid onto your top teeth, front teeth, and your bottom uh, front teeth, and it was solid, it was hard, you couldn't, there's no bend. At least with a cork, you do get a little bit of a, a, a bend to it, so you can, uh, it, you know, it's like everybody complains about it, you dribble and drool and look like a fool, because you've got your mouth wide open, but, um, you know, it's like going to the gym. It's uncomfortable to begin with. And then, you know, a month later, stuff you couldn't possibly do on the first day, you're whipping through and it seems quite natural. And that's exactly how it is with the cork. That I refer to it as your new best friend because you need to use it day in, day out. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Nicolette. That was awesome. Um, let me see. So this next question uh, looks like it's for the students. Um, what, for the students that are still with us, uh, what exactly made you pick theater of arts? Um, I'll, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I um, went like my high school was in high school theater, and we went to this college fair in UCLA. And I met um, some faculty there from TOA, and that's when I signed up. So I came to visit around the school, and I, everyone was just so lively. It was like a big family, and seeing a lot of the things they were doing, like motion capture and like stage management and voice, especially because I have um, intrusive art. So learning these new things, I, I, I instantly was drawn into it. And you meet a lot of amazing people, and that's what really like. Like everyone was so funny when I first got there, so I just got pulled in instantly. Awesome. Sounds good, man. I yeah, uh, same, same thing. Uh, oh, sorry, I was good. Oh no, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh <laughs> uh, no, I was just gonna say it's the same thing with me. It's the uh, one of one of the main reasons why I chose to come there was uh, I'd I'd met uh, people because I'd came to sit in on, on an improv class and uh, just the, the, the classmates, uh, you know, I got along really well with them. Uh, everybody's super nice and super awesome. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come back. <laughs> I, I just wanted to add to what Abel was saying about the, the people. Go on, Alex, you give us was, your story as well. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I found out about uh, Theater of Arts through a friend from work. Uh, Keith Pittman and he was you know talking the school up and he kept telling me dude you should go check it out just go and and, and meet me to uh, go talk to them just to at least get information because I certainly was looking for schools all over Los Angeles um, and a lot of them were just unaffordable I, I couldn't afford it uh, they were just ridiculously over expensive and uh, and uh, theater of arts was certainly one that offered classes that none of the other schools didn't have like stand-up comedy or motion capture uh so that was uh, uh those classes really caught my eye especially uh stand-up comedy i uh I, I really wanted to venture into into um uh, comedic acting and uh and and you know the people too I, I love i love the teachers and and all the students that we get along all really well and uh certainly feels like family thank you um, I chose this school personally. Um, I was reading the teacher's uh, background and I saw how equipped they were in the industry. And I've been to multiple colleges and um, they weren't like really the biggest school, but um, sometimes that's a good thing because they were able to just like focus on you and make sure you, the skills that you had um, were, were um, you know, they better your school better your skills so they can get you to the next level um that's why i personally like this school that's great that is awesome guys uh, let's see 
We've probably got time for two more questions, Reese. Yeah, I got, yeah, I was fixing to say, uh, I got time for two more. So Alex, this one's for you. Um, what, <laughs> what's the, what's the big, biggest role you've ever had? <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. I, whenever I'm working on a project, every role feels like it's the biggest role. Um, I think early on when I was very young, maybe 18, 19 years old, uh, I did a couple of different TV shows in New York, like Law and Order. And uh, the reason they were big to me at the time was just because of the exposure to how, to two things. One is uh, how incredibly seriously people take their work, how committed they are to their work, how good they are at their work. And then the second reason was because it kind of made it real for me. Sometimes um, when somebody's thinking about becoming an actor, it feels like there's this really big industry out there and you're on the outside of it, or maybe it's a dream or maybe it's an unrealistic pursuit, but being on a professional set, collaborating with really great actors in a, in a good uh, part kind of made it very real for me. So I think the first few jobs, which was <clears throat> years ago, uh, were probably the most influential for me. But but honestly, I know this probably sounds like a cliche, but every time I have a new, a starting new job, it feels like this is it. This is the most important job I've ever had. So I don't know. Look yeah. look up at, uh, look up some of my work and you tell me. Okay. <laughs> right, I'll definitely relay uh, the message. So <laughs> um, last but not least, last question. Um, where can I apply? Um, that's a very good question. You can apply online these days. So you can go to our website, toa.edu. And I was going to say, you can also follow us on social media. We have um, Facebook site. Um, if you look up Theater of Arts, we also have the um, Instagram site. Um, and at the moment, if you apply, it's normally $75. We're going to allow that application for free right now. Um, it's a very simple application. Someone will be in touch with you and it, it, you can also see your options there of financial aid, um, military, and if you're international. So hopefully we've covered the major bases there that we need to discuss. But please go onto our website, toa.edu, um, and you'll find lots of information about us there. All right. All right. Well, look, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And thank you, everybody, for taking part in this. And uh, I hope to see some people online and in person in the not-too-distant future at the Theatre of Arts. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.